Hello. In this video, we will discuss our second trigonometric substitution, specifically x equals a tangent of theta. We use this substitution when we have an integral containing an odd power of the square root of a squared plus x squared. In this video, we'll consider this integration technique, work through an example, and show the steps to complete the back substitution. Let's consider the following three integrals. In each of these integrals, we see that we have a power of the square root of a squared plus x squared. And we might be using a variable other than x, and in each case, a is some constant. So for example, for the second integral, we see the integral of the square root of 25 plus 9y squared dy. So under the radical, we have 5 squared plus 3y squared. So this would be like our a squared plus x squared. So we could pursue a, a trigonometric substitution of the form x equals a tangent of theta. When I consider x equals a tangent of theta, I can rewrite tangent, I can rewrite the equation to be tangent of theta equals x over a. And recalling that tangent of an angle in a right triangle means that we're looking at the opposite over the adjacent. So I can draw the reference triangle. And in the reference triangle, we see that x is the length of the side opposite angle theta. And we see that a is the length of the side adjacent to angle theta. And now we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse, which we know is just the square root of a squared plus x squared. So now, returning to our quantity the square root of a squared plus x squared, and applying our substitution, we see that the square root of a squared plus x squared equals the square root of a squared plus a times the tangent of theta squared. I'm going to get an a squared in each term under the radical, and I can factor that out. And so I'll have the square root of a squared times the quantity 1 plus tangent squared theta. And you'll recall that 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta by our Pythagorean identity. And when we take the square root of that quantity, a squared times secant squared theta, we will get the absolute value of a times the secant of theta. So you'll want to keep that in mind when you change your limits of integration and what angles you would need to deal with. So let's consider how we would evaluate the integral of dt over the quantity 8t squared plus 1 to the 5 halves power. We don't have a t in the numerator. So therefore, using a substitution of the form u equals 8t squared plus 1 would not likely produce a simpler integral. So we're going to proceed with the trig substitution of a tangent of theta in place of t. But first, we have to put the quadratic 8t squared plus 1 into the same form as t squared plus a squared, where a is a constant. So if I factor out within the quantity 8t squared plus 1, if I factor out an 8, I'm going to get in the denominator 8 times the quantity t squared plus 1 eighth, then all raised to the 5 halves power. So it's this quantity here, t squared plus 1 eighth, that I see the form t squared plus a squared. And therefore, a is equal to 1 over the square root of 8, or 1 over 2 times the square root of 2. So we're going to let t equal 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 times tangent of theta. Therefore, when we solve for dt by taking the derivative of both sides, we're going to get that t, dt is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 secant squared theta d theta. And as we go to make the substitutions in the integral, we have in the numerator, dt is replaced with 1 over 2 square root of 2 secant squared theta d theta. t is replaced with 1 over 2 square root of 2 tangent of theta, which gets squared multiplied by 8. And we add 1 before raising it to the 5 halves power. And now we simply perform some algebra. So um, the 8 times the square of 1 over 2 square root of 2 in, in the denominator will cancel. And so all I'm left with, as far as constants are concerned, are this 1 over 2 square root of 2 that comes from the numerator. In the denominator, I see we have tangent square root of theta plus 1, all raised to the 5 halves power. We know tangent square root theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So we can proceed with that substitution. And we get 
that our integral is now 1 over 2 square root of 2 times the integral of secant squared theta over secant squared theta to the 5 halves power. We can multiply those powers in the denominator, which leads us to have 1 over 2 square root of 2 times the integral of secant squared theta over secant to the fifth theta, d theta, and we can easily simplify that, leaving just the secant cubed in the denominator. So I want you to pause for a second, a few seconds, and I want you to consider where we would go next. So think about your work with trigonometric integrals and consider what steps you would take next. Well, hopefully you realize that 1 over secant cubed theta is the same thing as cosine cubed theta. And you know that when we have an odd power of, of cosine, that we hold back one of the cosines, and then we convert the remaining cosine squared theta using the Pythagorean identity. And then I distribute that cosine theta through I have two integrals. This first integral, 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 times the integral of cosine of theta, is a very easy one to do. We just know we just need to find a function whose derivative is cosine, which is easy, which is sine. Now in this second integral, we have the integral of sine squared theta times cosine of theta. And we see that cosine of theta is simply the derivative of sine. I could perform another substitution and let u equal the sine of theta then du is equal to cosine of theta d theta. And then I would just be left with an integral of the form u squared du. So integrating, I would get u cubed over 3. Do the back substitution. So u cubed would, get, would, be, uh, would become sine cubed of theta. And so our integral is 1 over 2 square root of 2 times the sine of theta minus 1 over 2 square root of 2 times sine cubed of theta over 3 plus c. And now we started with an integral in terms of t. We have an expression in terms of theta. So we have to perform the back substitution so that our final answer is in terms of t. So we recall that t is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 2 tangent of theta, which means that tangent of theta is equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times t. Thinking of this as the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent, I can draw my right triangle. So I have the opposite side is of length 2 times the square root of 2t divided by 1. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the hypotenuse has length square root of 8t squared plus 1. And then we know that the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have 2 square root of 2t all over the square root of 8t squared plus 1. We fill that in in each of those places. We simplify the values, and we're left with t all over the square root of 8t squared plus 1 minus 8 thirds times the quantity t over the square root of 8t squared plus 1 cubed plus c. Now, how do we know if we're correct? We take the derivative of our answer, and we check to see is that derivative equal to 1 over this quantity 8t squared plus 1 to the 5 halves power. So again, I'll leave that for you to check. And while you're at it, you can evaluate these two integrals, again, checking to see if you can perform uh, a simple u substitution prior to pursuing a trig substitution. In summary, we want to highlight the main ideas. So when considering the form of the integral and the known antiderivatives, prior to pursuing a trig substitution, you should consider to, a u substitution to see if that will first simplify the integral. If it doesn't, make sure you are able to recognize the forms associated with the trigonometric substitutions and make sure you substitute not only for the variable, like x in the integral, but also make a substitution for the differential. The square root of a squared plus x squared means that you're going to make a substitution of x equals a tangent of theta. And so that a squared plus x squared in the radical becomes the square root of a squared plus a tangent of theta, quantity squared, which simplifies to the absolute value of a secant of theta. 
when performing trig substitution, after you make the substitution, you want to simplify the integrand, then proceed with integration of the trigonometric integral, and perform the back substitution to convert the antiderivative to the original variable. The, the reference triangle for the particular trig substitution you used is helpful in reversing that substitution.